Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' unique book. Philander! Philander, where are you? Oh, keep close behind me, monsieur. Bien, suivez-moi. So what could Philander be thinking of to wander off this way? Monsieur Philander did not wander off. That is, I do not think so. You think the blacks came into camp and took him? I am sure of it. But he was lying within five feet of me. They couldn't have taken him without my hearing them. Monsieur, in certain parts of this continent, we of the French Navy have the rifles chained to the wrists of our sentries. If not, these natives, they steal upon the sentry and poof, before he can scream, the rifle is gone. Quiet a moment, Lieutenant. Listen. We must be nearer the village than we thought. No, it is not the village, that sound. The smaller party has found the larger party. Perhaps a war party or a tribe of hunters. Uh, then what do you propose, down no? We shall attack. This stealing of one of my safari, it is an affront. An affront against recognized authority. <laughs> Your senses, Darno. They've seen something. Yes. See those flickering of lights. Listen, mes enfants. As much as the jungle will permit, we will distribute ourselves in extended order. Upon my signal, we will open fire and aim between the ground and the flame of the torch. Stick really close to me, Professor. Uh, very well, Clayton. I feel as if we were getting somewhere at last. It's quite so, Clayton. Uh, any sort of action is a tonic to our fate. No. I don't know about the tonic, but action suits my temperament better than so-called watchful waiting. Uh, look, Clayton, look. Uh, we must be getting close. The flame from the torch is quite distinguishable. Yes. All we're waiting for now is Dano's men to take their positions. Uh, I can't tell, Clayton, whether or not we are making any headway. There are fewer torches anyway. Ah, here's one left. I don't know for sure, but it is my belief, Clayton, that they are running away. I think you're right. Eh, uh, monsieur, we have put them to rope. Now it is to search. We made quite a cleaning of them, eh, Donna? Ah, but yes. There must have been about a hundred. Uh, but still no trace of Philander. Ah, no fear. We will find him. I believe from the drums that the two parties have not met. Sir, uh, then we routed the other party. But yes, to have allowed them to meet would be fatal. We should never have been able to handle them otherwise. Then do you suggest that we press on now that we have somewhat of an advantage? That, monsieur, is my plan. These blacks do not kill at once. No. The torture is... Well, part of their system. That is so. And torture is only indulged in at the Boma, where all can enjoy the ceremony. Bon chapeautier! Come, monsieur! Let no chapeautier has found a trail in the jungle! My joke, wide enough for an elephant trail, I say. Yes, extensively used, no one would believe. But this has not been used by the party we attacked. See, there are no torches, no bodies. But, monsieur, we shall follow this trail nevertheless. the shadowy outline of the jungle wall, the moon rises red, round, and full. The giant trees, like the ghosts of sentinels, shiver as the chill wind drifts in off the sea. The jungle is uneasy. New Mother Lion stands before his lair, tail twitching, muzzle quivering as he tries to catch an elusive scent. Save for Tantor the elephant, the water hole is deserted. And even Tantor, who fears neither beast nor man, peers with his little eyes at the rim of deepening shadows that is the jungle's edge. Off on the little platform in the trees, Jane Porter and Tarzan watch the moon rise behind the sweeping purple edge of the distant mountain peaks. Beautiful. Even if the jungle is more dangerous by night, it is infinitely more beautiful. 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 
full. Yes, white skin. Beautiful. And Jane waves an expressive hand as though to include the whole gorgeous confusion of tropic vegetation and brightly hued blossoms. From a nearby branch, Nanyu the monkey watches, fascinated, what he considers the strange antics of a pair of hairless apes. Tarzan, Manu recognizes as a friend. But what of the other? Manu swings himself closer, hangs for a moment, tail curled about the branch, one paw holding the stem of a vine. With the other paw, he reaches out and touches Jane's hair. Oh! Oh, a monkey! Monkey? Monkey? Why, yes, white skin. Why, yes, a, a monkey. Manu, monkey. Manu. Manu? Oh, that's his name. Oh, hello, Manu. Come here, Manu. Oh, you're so cute. Manu grins and shows his teeth when he hears this hairless she-ape call him by name. He drops from his branch, settles on Jane's shoulder, and chatters excitedly in her ear. Suddenly, Manu stops. The lips still curled show the little sharp teeth, but now they're bared in mingled fear and anger. Jane's eyes open wide at the sudden change. Tarzan leaps to his feet, listening. This, then, is why the jungle is uneasy. The hated and feared enemy of the jungle is abroad, the Gomangani. Manu, teeth chattering, the fine hair standing on end, leaps into the trees and is gone. Tarzan looks down at Jane, points to the depths of the forest, and cups his hand behind his ear. Drum! Drum! Yes, white skin, drum! Look, like this! Jane beats upon the platform with her hand. Tarzan nods his understanding. White skin, go quick. Drums. And leave me here all alone, white skin. Jane, bright, brighten. White skin, come. Come back, quick, quick. Tarzan signs to Jane to go into the leafy shelter he has made for her. The ape man knows he hasn't the words necessary to explain to her that the drumming means the Gomangani have captured a prisoner and the prisoner may be one of our own people. Nor does Tarzan know that Jane believes her father, Philander and Clayton, have already left the jungle. Tarzan knows, but he cannot say that he must follow the sound of the drums. With one backward glance, he springs into the trees. A swift, sure grip on a trailing vine, a lunge with his feet, and he swings like a pendulum through a gap in the foliage. With breathtaking speed, he leaps from branch to branch, swings from vine to vine. Tarzan knows that the sounds come from beside the water's edge. The blacks always follow the broad trail of Tantor the elephant. Somewhere on that trail, he will find his quarry. Every living thing in the jungle is awake. Every jungle beast knows and hates the Gomangani with their poisoned arrows, their throbbing drums, their cleverly concealed snares. Tarzan stops. To his keen ears comes the sound, the soft tread of naked feet on the jungle floor. He moves aside. He moves the screening leaves. There, piling their way north and carrying Philander, bound and gagged, there are the blacks. Tarzan speeds onward. Now he's well beyond the approaching party. He drops to the broad branch of a leafy tree, crouches, waiting. Meanwhile, in the elephant trail discovered by Lieutenant Charpentier, the party cautiously advances in the direction of the black village. Strange, Dano. The jungle seems to be deserted. Not only of blacks, but of animals as well. <laughs> Do not be misled, monsieur, by appearances. Every brush, every tree may conceal one or more of our enemies. We could pass within, but yes, within inches of them, and we would never know. Uh, now that you mention it, Darno, I have had for some time the uncomfortable feeling that we are being watched. That uh, peculiar sense of eyes peering into my back. Those drums. One moment there in front, the next behind. They seem to move, to be all around us. Yes, I myself have been deceived in a similar way, man, uh, uh, Clayton. Uh, uh, most terrifying, most mysterious. These blacks, they are a strange people. They are like children, as far, but they do things we civilized peoples do not comprehend. But here, monsieur, your experience is no different from that of any who but arrive for the first time in these genres. But how do they do it, Dada? Ah, uh, monsieur... If we do that, why, these men, these old time errors who have lived here for years, they do not know. Look, Donna, Porter, what's that? Something in the brush. Where, well, monsieur? I see it. Look, there, on the edge of the trail. 